excited for this match. Well, apparently the first four cards for the Shaman are nothing new. <laughs> yeah, nothing new there. I mean, uh, just standard good old Shaman <laughs> right there. And the Azure Drake as a 5 drop. That's boring, man. <laughs> but the Shaman has so many spells that he is kind of forced to use as many spell powers as he can, um, as he can take, actually. I mean, this kind of. Uh, we've seen Shaman um, being popular for a very long time already, um, and the build has, throughout the year that Hearthstone has existed, has not never really changed that yeah, much. Yeah, not the really. core has always been the same cards, and therefore we are also not seeing any surprises in Garros End, except for this one card that we see right now, Power Maze. What do you think about that card? I think it might, it might be a quite a cool change in the Shaman deck, uh, but I don't like the fact that Shaman has so many creatures and the random factor in Power Maze will actually make it, you know, less powerful uh, with the random factor here. I'm actually pretty sure that Power Maze is an amazing card in Shaman, um, because Power Maze, you can set it up very well, I mean it's obviously a very strong weapon to just trade minions in the early game, just like Fireworks is, and the Death Rattle from the Power Maze can set up like a very strong turn 4 play, for example, with um, if you play, for example, Pilot the Treader or Mechanical mm -hmm. Yeti, mm -hmm. buffing them is just insane. It's like playing a 6 drop on turn 4 sometimes. You're right with that. Oh, it's a wild growth on turn 4. So, will he do it here? He. Savish is thinking that if. Gara has a flame tongue totem, playing the Yeti here will be kind of a waste, right? It will be traded off by two creatures that, are, that didn't cost so much mana. And uh, he opts for clearing the golem with his hero power, which is great use of his, um, well, his obdruid capabilities here. Yeah, it is, it, is very, it is very convenient that there was a minion to kill with that hero power, because you ha if you have that wild growth, you really want to play it by turn 4. Because if you play it uh, later than that, then it's just uh, like it's just it just uh, it just makes your place uh, for turn five and going forward um, a little bit worse. You want to drop on curve, mm -hmm. and um, also yeah, it, it will take some time until white growth is useful again uh, when it reaches ten mana. To yeah, for sure. So definitely a perfect spot to play white growth there. Oh look, a second wild growth. Yeah, he can actually use that one too because he has not nothing better to do, and then he can also he has something to accelerate into with his white growth anyway. He with the force of nature savage rock combo, if he wants to use that one uh, earlier than expected. Hmm. Well, hmm. Sh Sh Gara has a really bad hand to be honest. He's so yeah. dependent on answers here. He's not asking any questions for Savish. Yeah, exactly. The power maze is also looking kind of uh, meh at the moment because he has no, car no nothing to run the power maze into, first of all, and also nothing to buff with the death rattle. <laughs> but Defender of Argus might uh, see play next turn. Well, if uh, Savage will play the Keeper of the Grove and kill one of the creatures, Defender drops with, uh, with his one. value there. I think you play the keeper. He still um, is. Um, I think he's worrying about the flame down. So he doesn't want to play the yet yet. Druid has to has to struggle for the board control against Shaman because Shaman can, can so easily play any amount of creatures that will replenish the board uh, after. Uh, that Druid will just play a single minion. Yeah, we've said it before, I mean, Druid doesn't have a great way to clear the board uh, effectively with one single spell. There's mm -hmm. the swipe, but uh, that's often enough not enough, especially not against Shaman, with all those totems having two health. You're and, absolutely uh, right. Yeah. Crackle there, with no RNG, will just kill off the Keeper. That's, uh, but I don't think that's the card you want to use the crackle on ah oh, definitely not i mean we can we can probably what? we will probably see power another totem and item? then maybe power maze hitting the keeper i don't like none of the plays seem really exciting but crackle is definitely not the card that we want to use on a keeper that's for sure yeah gara doesn't have really much of a choice here 
Oh, oh, he actually does go for the crackle. I think. Oh, oh. seven <laughs> points of damage. I think that was kind of unnecessary, but of course he still has the hex against bigger minions. And speaking of big minions, here comes Dr. Boom. The new almost stable 7 mana drop. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Dr. Boom definitely making his presence felt here. Even if <laughs> Gara clears the Boom bots here, they're gonna do some serious damage. Dr. Boom improves the Shaman matchup so much for Druid. It's really important. It's even it's so much better than scenarios in every single way, uh, and also Druid is struggling against those pesky um, shaman totems that are just standing there in the way. They have two health points, and the, the boom bots are just capable of running into whatever shaman plays, and then maybe randomly kill. The, yeah, uh, and as a shaman, what do you really want? And as a shaman, what do you really want to do against those boom bots? You can use lightning storm, sure, but then what? <laughs> like, well, you have to use hex on the seven seven guy, for sure. It's just a big of a threat. Yeah, of course. Well, the boom bots are still on the board. Let's see what they are gonna do. Well, one one of them will sacrifice himself for the searing totem and maybe kill the other totem. This this will be a great outcome for Savish here. But he has the savage roar in his hand. And the whole combo. Oh, oh perfect oh, hit right there. Yeah. Ancient of Lore will draw some cards. Get some. I mean, the healing is definitely not an option here, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it seems like seems like the best option for Savis, although. Well, yeah, I, don't know, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think the Druid of the Claw plays decent here. He has a way better play with Druid of the Claw and Druid uh, Yeti next turn when he's yeah, exactly. to do it. If he doesn't plan on using the combo next turn, then keeping the Yeti with Drill the Cloud for next turn is much more. It, it fits much more the curve. Yeah, definitely. I don't think he's in any position to go for the combo next turn. That, is it lethal if uh, Gara doesn't clear the board? Well, it's, um, it's an additional 9 damage to the 14, and so <laughs> it's 20. Three. That's Maybe. two damage of lethal. Yeah. Second power mace. Hmm. That's unlucky. But being two damage of lethal is definitely nothing bad against the shaman. Shaman. Well, he has a way to oh, him boy, heal yeah. himself now with the vita uh, vita yeah, vitality. Yeah, if, if to play that card. I don't think so. That that kind of deck with power maces and crackles. Uh, I think it just indicates that there are no defensive cards that are, in my opinion. Yeah, this is just a really rough start for Gara here. I mean, all those cards are pretty much useless. There was no early game pressure in, in form of minions, and Power Mace re never really got a good um, thing that it can trade. Hmm. Well, he can count on getting a. Oh, he didn't get that uh, spot power totem. So. Maybe power mace and kill the bomb, now that will be super bad. Airshock the bomb! Wow. Yeah, and he has to clear the Druid of the Claw, so Druid, for the, uh, Druid of the Claw dealt 8 points of damage for just 5 points of mana. That's sufficient. Yeah, definitely. Almost like a Pyroblast. Oh man! Double Savage Raw combo for next turn. Yeah, if it wasn't looking bad for Gara previously, now it definitely does. That's that game. combo alone is 22 damage, even without that Ancient of Lore. Yep. That's enough for lethal. So even if Gara clears this Ancient of Lore without taking any damage, he will still die. He has to take 5 points of damage to the face. Gara He's is still safe from regular safe, combo, yeah. but... Not for an Innervate double Savage Roar combo. But to be fair, even with just a single combo, he will just play Keeper of the Grove and deal additional 2 damage next turn. So it wasn't really a factor here. Alright, so Savis taking that game 1 from Gara. Shaman, maybe not as strong as... Uh, yeah, as we thought, and um, I mean, obviously, 
only one player chose to play Shaman here, it was Gara. And maybe Gara made a mistake by actually just choosing Shaman. Well, to be to be fair, his draw was awful. That's true. That is definitely true. I mean Shaman is not it's not like unplayable, let's just say that. Even though only one player brought it to this tournament, Shaman definitely. is definitely has always been a strong contender. Um but right now for Gara it didn't work out and Shaman therefore if Gara is getting eliminated, then we won't have any more shamans in the round of eight. Yeah, that's true. That would be sad. Well, uh, every single class is represented by someone in this tournament. Uh, unfortunately, shaman is only picked by Gara, but we hope maybe we can see uh, that more of that dead in the future. Because I'm I'm still curious which cards did he use uh, in his deck. We will see, of course, each deck list after the tournament, and uh, we'll post it on Reddit for sure and on King Queen Net uh, blog. The, I, I'm sure yeah, about that definitely. with some more stats. So it, it will be an interesting read after the tournament. But for now, uh, both players are preparing for the game two, and Gara has to pick something um, between the remaining hunter and um, warrior. I think it was warrior. Yeah, uh, Gara. let's see here... Uh, Gara picked Hunter, we just got the information. So, I think that indicates that um, it's an aggressive shaman, an uh, aggressive hunter then. That was the natural natural um, enemy of the druid. Yeah, it, uh, druid definitely struggled against hunter because hunter um, could burst out some more damage and... Um, I mean, just... And it, it was really, it, it was actually really tough sometimes. You can build Druid in a way now that uh, it has a really good matchup against Hunter, mm -hmm. but uh, from my ex personal experience, Hunter was always having like a slight edge, um, even though it's not as visible uh, sometimes. Um, just the added up damage from the hero, po the constant hero power, Druid, even though it can armor up, doesn't have much to do uh, against it in the long game. That's sure. Insane. So uh, if, if, if he doesn't, doesn't hit like Innervate Keeper on turn 2, it's really hard to pull off a comeback against the uh, Hunter. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Druid has to rely on the combo to finish off the Hunter, but uh, sometimes, I mean, often enough, Druid is always on the back, uh, I mean, is always fighting back against the board, mm -hmm. and that's not usually what Druid wants to do. Druid wants to be the aggressor overall, uh, but Druid cannot really race a Hunter. This is why Druid has to use the minions to trade minions away, and that favors value. overall favors the hunter because it makes the Druid combo that much worse. Of course, yes. And like freezing traps has uh, are having so much value against Druid. Yeah, definitely freezing trap also a big factor if some big minion gets innervated out. So we will see how this matchup all goes down. Gara, what kind of hunter will he bring to the table? Most likely it's going to be an aggressive hunter, but Gara is always there for a surprise. He's surprised with, with Shaman, after all, being the only player that plays it. So what kind of hunter deck will he bring to the table? Oh. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> We're we in some... for a treat here. We, we are in for some interesting stuff here. Illuminator. I, I have to check the stats. Gara is most likely the only player who plays that yeah, card. Yeah, I just wanted to check that. Uh, Illuminator. <laughs> wow. I mean, Illuminator, this obviously hints... Um, yeah, Gara is the only player bringing Illuminator to the tournament. This obviously hints towards a control type of hunter, um, reliant on secrets and traps, and... Crazy. Yeah, we, let's see what kind of late game minions this control hunter can bring, if he plays any. Well, greetings traveler, and my greetings indicate uh, that there was a wild growth on turn two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely the pain for many players. The turn two wild growth just gives such an unfair advantage to the druid player most of the time. But we see that there's a freezing trap, and there's also a hunter's mark, so Gar can easily deal with that um, yeti, whatever he likes with. So he opts to choose the Hunter's Mark and sacrifice 4 points of HP, but that's still okay. He has 2 creatures on board and 1 is buffed to 2-2, which 
Well, that pushes some some damage through. But Safish picked from the uh, start of the game an innervate, which means that he can uh, he is able to drop the Ancient of Lore, providing him the necessary card draw, and he gets all the answers that he has to have uh, against Hunter. Keeper of the Grove, Wrath, and Swipe all are needed to win the game against Hunter. Yeah, definitely a very strong hand for Savis, and on the back of that wild growth and innervate, he's definitely making some power plays right now. And Ancient of Lore seems pretty useless now, however, now that Freezing Trap hits the board. Yep. It won't be playable until turn 9. If he attacks, of course. Yeah, of course. He will just... He can't, he can't really take the risk of attacking with this Ancient. He needs to play um, a Keeper of the Grove or something, like something small, just to trigger the trap with it. And then get use out of the attacks from the Ancient of Lore. Also, look, Gara is using Cairn Bloodhoof. Which, have, which we have seen was replaced by the new piloted, uh, piloted Sky Golem. In some decks, yes, but uh, the reason, I think, why this Cairn is in, the, in this Hunter deck is because, uh, like in general, the reason why he's in the deck is probably Feign Death. Oh, you Imagine right. Feign Death with this kind of board. Oh man. Wow. Like that, that's gonna be crazy if Gara draws into that. Let's hope he will draw one. I really want to see the fine death with yeah. this this kind of board. <laughs> I mean, the fine death um, with this board in particular is not good against Savis's hand because Savis has the swipe. But still, Savis would have to use the swipe before the hundred creepers will actually spawn the death rattle itself. Yeah, we will see how it goes. Savis is actually interesting also to know that hmm. he chose to attack. He chose to attack with the ancient of war. I Maybe he was just banking on this trap not being a uh, freezing trap. Yeah, I, I, I'm almost sure he thought that might be a snake trap, so he wanted to trigger the snake trap and play the swipe there. Yeah, that definitely would have been a strong turn for Savis. Second Hunter's Mark, okay. This turn is kinda awkward, but I think it's just hero power and go face with both creatures and maybe save the weapon charge. A snake trap we see it right now. Savish would definitely attack with this creature, so Gara knows that and he opts to to kill the keeper. That's a wise choice because because of the attack from the Ancient of Law the turn before, Gara might guess that uh, Savish has this wipe in hand. Oh wow, Doctor Boom hits the board right now, and that poses a big threat to the board of Gara. Here's the Hunter's Mark to deal with the Dr. Boom immediately, so that's good for him. He can silence one uh, one of the bombs, but uh, you, want, you want to keep the silence for a taunt creature. And you also want to play uh, Cairn Bloodhoof this turn. Yeah, definitely. He even placed the Cairn Bloodhoof before um, trading the bombs away, mm -hmm. just so Cairn might soak up some damage from the bombs, maybe. That's a great outcome for Gara, I think. Well, it's turn 8, so there is a ke second keeper. Second keeper is a um, is the only silence left in Savish deck, I think. Yeah, and that second keeper is actually crucial just to prevent the death rattle from the cairn. Yeah, but there's for sure there will be some Savannah Hymen in this deck. Definitely, I would agree. Because if you have the option of playing Cairn or Savannah High Main, then you definitely choose Savannah High Main over the Cairn. Yeah. And um, in that case, I'm pretty sure he plays both. Maybe he's not playing any kill commands. Hmm? But, yeah, no kill commands is definitely uh, pretty good in Control Hunter because you don't need the burst damage uh, to the face, that's for sure. Uh, and Hunter has way better spells to just deal with minions than kill command. <laughs> Sylvanas Windrunner, so he's for sure playing Fain Death here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if Karen wasn't an indicator before, Sylvanas definitely is. So there's still Snake Trap, and Gara has to think how to deal with those creatures because he can die easily next turn with a combo. He has yeah. to kill the Keeper. Or the Yeti, I have no time for games. and then just drop the Sylvanas, I think. 
Yeah, right. Sylvana setting the board. And Gara. Killing off the keeper. Going face with the rest. This sets up a very good swipe for Savis here. Swipe into attack the Sylvanas. That clears the board. And gives him a play with. Oh my god, he triggered the attack trap, so that's just insane here. Mm -hmm. That's. Oh, oh man, that, that's really tough for Gara here. Whole board getting wrecked. But just one spell. Sylvanas getting no value at all. He's left with two low impact cards in his hand and two of those being weapons. Yeah, the only thing that Gara can do now is go face and hope that the weapon that that the weapons will are will be enough to <laughs> kill him, but we see scenarios and Harrison and Ancient of Lords. It's just too many high impact cards. Well, oh man. Well, Hunter gets wrecked again. Yeah, Savis has enough damage on the board to represent lethal already, and Gara sees it, chooses to concede. And quick match, quick match, but that's the second time I'm kind of disappointed at Glaive Zuka. It didn't, didn't really matter at all in the match, I think. I don't like this card. You know what I'm worried about right now? I mean, I've, pre I've predicted it, but I don't really want this prediction to come true because that would be really rough for, for Tempo Storm. No, no, don't say it. Don't say it. Well, Zero nine. No, no, don't say it. I think Gara will still make a comeback here. Still has one le deck left, which is Warrior, which is the best deck in the meta game, apparently. Apparently, but yeah, Warrior. We've seen some three O's from Warrior, but and uh, Warrior uh, struggles against Druids. Yeah, it will this be rough. doesn't look good for uh, Gara here, so we might see uh, we might um, see some upset here. I mean, upset by just the three O. Oh, yeah, like that's the that's just yeah the, the outcome of just being a, it being a clean sweep. That's kind of an upset, but uh, definitely not an upset that Savis would win in general if he wins. Um, let's see if Gara can make a comeback here, though. Warrior definitely has the potential to do so, but he will definitely need a little bit of luck. Man, I hope Gara pulls this off, really. I want to see more of those players, because I want, also want to see other decks from Savage and see what what did he came with. And, well, I'm rooting for Gara here, I have to say it. Yeah. And it also would be sad to see the only Shaman player getting eliminated already. Yep. So yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> After that, <laughs> looking tough, but uh, we'll see how the match goes. It's still winnable for the warrior, and the amount of armor maybe will bring him back to the game. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Savish has the full array of his setup still, so it's paladin and warrior also. So he has many ways to keep the game going. And we'll be jumping into the game in a few seconds. Players are setting up the spectator more right now. Man, but and Gara has is, is definitely not in a good spot yeah. here. But man, loads are this is like only the third match today, and we still have five matches to go today. This is going to be an insane day, and we're going to have plenty of action for you guys. And after this match, it's going to be Strife Crow versus Fraser. Fresar. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to see Strife Pro play, to be fair. My, you know my opinion decks? in my opinion the best player in the game. Really? Yeah. That's a strong opinion. Yeah, I mean he's he's one of the genius minds behind many decks and many innovations in the meta game. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure that I mean he predicted to Doctor uh, Boom to be an insanely good card and look what happened. Doctor Boom was yep. an insanely good card. What is interesting I can say to you guys that Dr. Boom is being used 20 times in every uh, in all of the decks. Correct. 20 times, man. This is one of the most used legendaries uh, in overall and the most used legendary in GVG expansion. Second one is Trog. I mean Trogzor. Trogzor, the Earthinator. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're jumping right into the game. The players are ready and we see Garrosh versus Malfurion. <laughs> nice impersonation. Oh, 
turn one Shade of Naxamas or turn one Yeti. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> oh man. <laughs> that, that is... Uh, the, the Yeti, the, developing the Shade of Nax has more benefit, I would say. Uh, I think I would opt to play just the Shade of Nax. Oh, wait, to be honest... You don't have a follow-up for turn two if you don't play... It's kind of awkward with every single play, but I think I would go with the Shade of the Yeah, I'm first. pretty sure you want to develop the board, uh, develop the Shade as early as possible, uh, just so um, it gets out of range of any type of AoE as early as possible. For example, if you play, just play a Shade on turn 3, for example, it can be killed by Explosive Sheet, for, oh, yeah. for instance. That's right. So, um, in that case, um, getting the Shade out early is definitely beneficial. Savir is still thinking about it. He's not sure which which way to go, but he opts with the Shadow Black Stramas. And I agree with that. Shadow Black Stramas is the most threatening card to Warrior, in my opinion, in this matchup. Yeah, only way to deal with it is Brawl, if the Shade or, stays in hiding. Or, or the new Bomb Lobber. But when there will be turn 5, for the Bomb Lobber to actually make a, uh, make a splash on the board... It's gonna be too late after that, yep. yeah. And there even is the explosive sheep, as I was mentioning. <laughs> oh wow. I mean, this shade of Naxxramas will just be a, a huge threat the longer the game goes because of um, the potential danger of Force of Nature, Savage Roar, combined with the shade just being way too much damage to handle. Savis needs some more pressure though, and he will do it right now by playing Chillwind Yeti here. This is such a huge board to deal, deal with. Gara has a way to deal with the Yeti right now because uh, Savish will not attack with the Shadow of Axamas because he, he's fearing the death, death Spite which is 4 attack so he can clear um, clear the Shadow of Axamas but the yeah. outcome of this is Yeti getting killed by the Shield Slam for just 1 mana second Shade of Next Ramas Shade and this oh, is man. great use for Savis unless Gara actually Bomblobber that's exciting. Now it's 50-50 to actually kill one oh of the shades. Man. And you get it! it. <laughs> nice bomb lobber right there for Garo. That was crucial, because otherwise like two shades being on the board without a brawl in Garo's hand, that's just... Uh, just the death looming <laughs> in a few turns. Now I think Savish has to attack with this shade. He's, he's already out of the range of any uh, single weapon. The only thing that can, that can kill uh, this shade is Execute with a combination of whirlwind or whatever. It's not necessary though. You can just wait. The warrior will not uh, be able to like counteract the board pressure. And, and I don't know, like... The, the Savis, Savis also has a lot of good stuff in his hand. The Black Knight is perfect right now. It doesn't get better than that. Killing of Sludge Badger. Just perfect on curve play because like would he have played he probably would have played the Belcher regardless even if mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. even if Gara didn't have a taunt there. Dr. Boom from Gara this time. And <laughs> wow. <laughs> this shade is already eight eight. Yeah, it's just growing and growing, but the question now for Savis is how does he deal with this board? He could play his own Doctor Boom for sure. But it's not a boom overload. Man, I, we haven't seen two Dr. Booms in play at the same time. No, we didn't. So that's this gonna be some crazy some interaction, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> bomb setting off another bomb. And he goes with it. Oh man. And the Shade also attacking right now, because now the board is like super stacked for a brawl. And there's oh, the there's bomb head! It was like the perfect timing to attack with the Shade. Getting the huge chunk of damage in and now the brawl hits the board. So do you attack the face with everything and then just play Brawl? Oh man, I mean there's, there's other ways to clear the board too, you don't need, really need to do it with the Brawl, but no. I think using the Brawl here is definitely very good. Where do you find time to actually play Brawl after that? You have only one card on board, your opponent has three. Oh man. Well, the other option... If Gara would have an execute, he can try uh, to play the shield block first, see what he will draw, then he still has mana for the brawl, but if he draws into an execute, then he can play the second shield slam, uh, shield block, shield slam, in example the shade, use the execute 
on the um, on the uh, Black Knight. Okay, he didn't do that. Okay, this is this is gonna be as random as it gets. What is the outcome of this roll? Oh, oh my man. god! The shade survives, and that is bad news for Gara right there. And seven points of damage to the face. That is the worst possible outcome. Wow. Why did he attack with Dr. Boom into that Black Knight? Just to uh, increase the chance that one of his minions survives. Huh. But, yeah, that just increased the chance of, of <laughs> the shade, shade surviving. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That means the end of the game. There's no way Gara can deal with that without the execute. That was really unlucky, but definitely well played by Savis. Attacking with the shade at the right time as well. Uh, I mean, there was not much ro not much that Savis could do wrong here, and Gara also got <laughs> very unlucky with that brawl for sure. I mean, that was the worst possible outcome, and it was like super low percentages of that happening. He still has 22 points of HP and he draws into Shield Maiden, but uh, is this lethal yet? No, that's 21. So if uh, if Savage will draw into an Innovate, that will mean the end of the game. Yeah. But I think Gara will armor up here. Oh no, he plays the sheep. So if if Savage draws the Innovate, nope. That's almost Innovate. <laughs> well. Is he going go f is he gonna go for a combo here? Yeah, I think so. He has swipe and keeper of the grove in his hand. So why wouldn't he play the combo here? No, well, he Alex, the there, there can be an Alex Straza. Yeah. It's already turn nine. Sure. So yeah. Where shall I Good choice by Savish here. And this board is already hard hard enough to deal with for Gara. He can play Gromash plus Fire Warx to clear it, however, the combo will finish him off. Yeah, and there's no executes. He didn't draw the cards that he needed to answer the board, and the brawl just costed him in the game. Really unfortunate for Gaara. Oh man, this is so rough. Can't, can't help to feel sorry for, for Tempo Storm in general. Wow. Everyone from Tempo Storm getting wrecked 3 0. Too bad for Tempo Storm here. Yeah. Both players from Til Team Liquid are advancing, and all three players from Team Archer, uh, uh, Team Archon are advancing. Cloud Nine, well, almost. Colento is dropped yeah, we out. Still have, we still have one but more player still from Cloud Nine. Crow in the upcoming match. But right now, Savish taking a 3-0 with his Druid against Gara. So a really, really tough match for Gara here.